Welcome to another app review, the one good road here. Today I'm going to be reviewing Google Maps. This is the 2021 version. I've used Google Maps for several years. I'm a long time user and I want to give my full review on this application. I think it's amazing, like right off the bat and everybody uses it. It's like on almost every Android device and iPhone device you can think of and probably every computer. I've used it for tracking various different trips around the world as you can clearly see. This is actually what you're seeing right now is was compiled from using in your your timeline feature in within the app which allows you to save your location. And so this is all from like save locations and then I've stitched together my own map which is made in Google My Maps which I'll explain on another maybe another time because it's there's quite a lot of data to unpack when it comes to that and these this is my world tour when i was touring around the world so i'm going to show you all of the useful features that i find amazing about google maps also some of the things that i really wish would change so i'm going to show you share with you the pros and cons i'll share with you many insights i'll try and just share as much as i can yeah let's just begin this is the user interface first which you're presented with now just so that everyone's up to date. This looks quite different to what you'd normally see. So if we tap on the top right on the, the account settings, I'm gonna change this back to light mode just to, so that you know that this is what normally Google Maps would look like. I'm also going to turn off the satellite imagery. And also down here, I'm going to turn off the map data, which is the custom map I made with Google My Maps. And you can load all of this in directly into just the Google Maps app for Android and for your iPhone, which is amazing. So I'm going to close that and then we'll go back. Now everything looks a little bit more familiar, I think. So this is what it would look like for most people. Let's begin with the user interface. So we have the search, which is simple enough. You literally type your address and then you go. So I'm going to type in some random town, which is nearby. It's going to load up that town. We can tap bottom left for directions, the blue button, and you can then start your navigation, simple enough. You can also save that as a pinned location. I don't use this feature very often because for me, I don't, I don't commute back and forth. I, I know my address. I don't need to type it in again and again, but you might want to do that depending on how the traffic is and things like that. We then have the saving your pins. So you can save an address by simply tapping on some area. I'm gonna tap on a mountain location like this, the Mont Dolmes. And then we tap on that location and then we've got save down here. Now I can save that into my starred places, for example. You can make your own custom list if you want. So that's all there. And then it's saved and I can bring that back up. So you can see where it is visually. I think that's really handy. I love this feature. I think a lot of people use this in Google Maps. It's just really amazing, really handy. We've got preset searches here up in the top. So let's say I'm looking for a bakery. Let's zoom in on a different town with more bakeries. Or boulangeries, as they say in France. Uh, here are the boulangeries. And this is what we have. And it'll bring up all the bakeries in that area. Pretty handy. They also give you the reviews. You know. There you go, self-explanatory. So we have the presets, we have the voice search, and then at top right, we have the account. You can change your account. I've got a business account and a personal account there, so you can run multiple accounts. You've got incognito mode that just, does, it doesn't save any of your data. As you can clearly see, as it says here, it doesn't save your browse history. So you are basically incognito, as it says, which is quite handy. Um, self-explanatory and also very, very handy. So I can turn that back off and it'll swap back into my account. Then we also have the map layers or map types as they like to call them. I am going to show you just the default view first. This has changed a lot over the years. Since I first used Google Maps, it looked so different on the graphic interface on how it looked. Now there's a better distinction between what's an urban environment, what's farmland, what's a national park, what's forest, what's mountains, depending on your area. It'll give you different colors on how like wild that piece of landscape is. Um, like if I zoom in on this area, you can see this is probably high alpine climate. 
I change the satellite imagery, yes, it matches that that uh, graphic interface. So it's very handy for just a glance, just getting a rough idea of like where the mountains are and where the national parks are, things like that, where the urban environments are. We then have satellite imagery, which is incredible. Everybody loves it, I think. And Google Maps is just astounding when it comes to to this feature. Google Earth is is renowned. Everybody knows Google Earth, I think. And Google Earth is basically baked into Google Maps, which is just amazing. The fidelity you get is incredible. I mean, you can just zoom in on like, I don't know, this little mountain hut in the middle of the mountains, and you can see there's a little, little squidgy bit of refuge there, which is just amazing. The fidelity is just incredible, and I think it's a feature that is truly overlooked and very, I mean, this is military grade navigation in every consumer's hand, which is amazing. You can change that map layer to terrain, which is very useful. Only if you're in the mountains, it's useful. And it even gives you some really basic contour lines. I, I do wish, as a pro and a con, I wish that you could read the, the meters, the altitude better, because you can't really read it very well. You can see it's a little bit faded, and I can barely see that. I think it says 2,000, yeah, 2,300. So you can, you can barely read that, and it would be nice for that to be a bit more clearer in the future. But nevertheless, the, the hill shading is very useful to see where the mountains are. It, it's just gives you that 3D view. Speaking of 3D, let's go to default and 3D mode. Now I'm going to zoom in on a different city. Maybe we have London. And I know we have the London Eye somewhere around here. I think it's right there. There it is. And then I'm going to turn turn the whole map view. I'm, I've zoomed in quite a lot. I'm taking two fingers and literally just tilting the screen or the whole plane field up. I zoom in enough and I'm going to get 3D data. So now we can see the, the London Eye, which is pretty cool. Uh, amazing feature, really useful if you're trying to get an idea of like where buildings are and where your, your position is relative to other things because there could be a lot of things all up like for example i've zoomed in on this mall the shopping mall and we can see where each level is which is just i mean technology we have today is just insane um very useful only useful if you're in the cities and that 3d mode does not work if you're in like the mountains or something the data is not up to date with that yet uh, we've got street view which is incredible i mean you can see like pretty much all of Europe is completely covered in street view. Uh, as soon as you go over east, it gets a bit more patchy and in the Sahara and south of that. Depends where you are. The United States is, is really good on street view. Um, I can bring up like any mountain data I want. I use this mostly for discovering mountain peaks. This is, uh, this is data from someone's 360 camera, which is pretty cool. And we can see this mountain. This is uh, in Northern California which is an incredible hike, highly recommend it. It's a, it's a big hike, 4,000 meters, but I highly recommend it. Um, so we've got that data, which is really, really cool. Um, I'm gonna zoom back into where I'm, in, I'm at, I'm in the Pyrenees. So I'm gonna turn off the street view data. We've also got public transport, and I'm gonna give you a couple examples. Google is pretty amazing. Google Maps is pretty amazing in London, you can see all of the London Underground is pretty much networked, which is amazing. And I'll give an example. We have one train line, one piece of public transport in the mountains here that you can take. And I'm going to just select this town here, Tarascon, and I'm going to change it to train mode. There's only one, only one train you can take. Um, but it's there. And what I'd like to comment on is that when you're starting your navigation, um, it's just amazing. Like when you're, once you're on the, the line itself, it'll change from this cause it's suggesting to cycle first or walk into town. And then once you're on the public transport, it tells you when you're going to get off at your location. Visually, I find this so handy cause sometimes you're a bit lost on when do I get off the train or when do I get off the bus? Google maps is one of the best in the business for that. You can add that to calendar. I mean, it's just the public transport in this app is pretty outmatched. I don't know many other software that gets as good and as generalized as Google Maps does. 
Um, it's not it's not like the best of the best, but it, it's definitely better than what what the competition is at the moment. Traffic data, pretty self-explanatory, tells you where there's any road closures. Let's zoom in on a city that has more congestion, maybe. You can see there's more congestion in London, obviously. Um, you can su submit a road closure simply by, let's zoom in back in Pyrenees. Uh, let's say that this tunnel here, which happens quite frequently, is closed. And so I, I tap and hold, and I bring up the pin. I slide up. I can report a problem, report a problem, and it'll bring up the add or fix a road, and then you can report a road closure if it's private, um, etc. Um, other, you can probably go for incidents probably around there. So that you're reporting an incident and things like that is in this area. Um, what else do we have? We have, I'm getting out of the search there. So we've got traffic data, cycling data could be improved. It's not the best, it's very general. For example, there's a there's a bike path here that is vaguely marked, but it actually goes, hey, they've actually updated that, That that's not bad. That's good, I'm, I'm happy they updated that. I'm gonna bring up a better city to show you the cycle, cycling data and comparing it to another app. We've got Amsterdam here, right? Which has obviously some of the best bike paths in the world and it's pretty rich in terms of bike paths, but how do I distinguish between what's a walking, like little tiny trail, like made of dirt, or what's a paved bike path? This is the other app, this is called Mappy. And I do recommend this app because when we zoom in on, for example, the a Amsterdam in the Netherlands, we get a lot more data shown to us on where the bike paths are. And if I zoom in at a certain level, we can see that there's national routes, there's cycling paths, there's hiking routes. They're all marked in different colors. You do need to learn what the other colors are. But this gives me much better data on distinguishing the difference between the two. So I, I really recommend this app instead. Um, it's also better for hiking and for cycling. But if you're just wanting like quick navigation and you don't really want to fuss about it, you should want to know like your average time. It's not too bad. You can just tap directions and you can tap on the cycling one and there you go. There you have it. Speaking of the cycling app there, when we're, let's say I'm going to tap on a mountain pass. Let's say I want to go up uh, the mountain here, local mountain peak. And I will say that the cycling mode isn't that good when it comes to navigation on Google Maps. For example, this is a dirt road. I don't know why it's sending you up here. You can you can adjust this, but the point is you slide up and you get the elevation profile, which is really, really useful. Highly recommend to try and utilize this. When you're in hiking mode, it doesn't bring it up for some reason. I think this would be an extremely useful feature, but there there is no elevation profile if you were just walking. I don't know why that is. That's a pro and a con right there. Um, but then again, if you want to update, like for example, it's taking you up this route that I don't want. You can go to the top three buttons here. You can add a stop and we can slide up and then we can change that. We can add another location, another pin. So I'm going to put this pin here. And that's how you make a custom route. And it's still not taking me the way I want. But that's how you make a custom route in Google Maps. Then again, I recommend using the computer instead of using Google Maps on the phone to make these custom routes because it's not that good. Again, I recommend a different app like Mappy where I can literally tap on this pin, which was the one we just loaded before, directions. It's bringing up the hiking route. You can see there's a hiking route going up there. Let's change it to bike mode. And it's taking me on the road because I've selected road and google maps doesn't have this level of customizability if you're on a bike or if you're hiking and I, as a as a person who main my main mode of transportation is either public transport bike or walk um this is something that's a deal breaker for me and this is why i use a different app i highly recommend this app it's it's super good um elevation profile yada 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 anyway back into google maps so the navigation could be improved. Another feature I'm quite a fan of is the measure tool. 
So for example, let's say I want to measure the distance from this city, Barcelona, and I want to measure how far it is in a straight line if I was like going along the coast to somewhere. So I can measure the distance to say one of these islands, for example, let's say Menorca. I used to go here when I was a kid actually. Um, so it's telling me it's about 200 kilometers. So if you were sailing, for example, this feature is quite useful for sailing or if you have a large piece of land to cover. Strange thing is, as soon as I start zooming out, the, the pin is still following where I'm drawing. So it's changing the distance as I draw it out. The thing is, I've already marked the two points. I only want to know what the distance is between the two points. So now I have to go back to the center. Okay, it's 200 kilometers from the coast of Spain. And that's how I figure out that. So that's the drawing feature. You can also draw, I believe, a, an area like this. And it's not telling you, in, in Google My Maps, you can draw an, a square area or, or any area, and it'll tell you the surface area of that area. And you cannot do this within Google Maps. So you can draw straight lines, but that's it. That, so it's kind of basic, but if you were sailing, it's quite useful. What would be nice in the future is, can I save this as a GPX or a KML file? If I could save this route, because it was, all it's drawing, doing is drawing lines on a map. This one is called Draw It, and it uses Google Maps, which is interesting. Uh, it uses Google Map data. Now, what I can do is literally grab a pen. Well, not a pen, but use my finger. And I can draw a route like this and then like that. And then I've got a route, like literally just by drawing it. And then what this application will do is try to auto snap to the actual roads in that area. Anyway, that, that's something I'd like to see is the point I'm trying to make um, because you cannot do this within Google Maps. And I think it would be kind of cool if you're walking on like smaller trails around the area, it's a pretty useful feature to be able to do that. So what else can we discuss? I'm going to turn the theme back into dark mode. So we can go to theme, dark mode, change it back there. We can add a home or a work address, which is cool for the like Google Go mode. You can remove your location history by going into map history here, and then you can get rid of whatever you want because Google Maps tracks everything. You can either turn this feature off by going tapping here and it'll stop everything that it's tracking basically. I highly recommend using incognito mode now and then, um, then you won't, don't need to worry about that. We've also got various navigation settings in here. You can, it, honestly, I recommend just diving into this yourself and having a look and trying the app yourself. But you can avoid tolls, you can add your speedometer or your speed, the speed limit. So th this has changed over the years because when we tap on an address and I go directions, um, it's gonna bring me my speedometer down in the bottom left. I'm not moving at the moment, but that's where your speedometer is. And that's changed over the years. I'm, glad that they implemented this. We can go to driving and it's more useful when you're in driving mode, obviously, because then you can see it'll bring up the speed limit on this national highway here that goes through the mountains in the Pyrenees. And that's very useful because we've got a lot of speed cameras and you want to find out like when you need to follow the uh, recommended speed limit and etc. In settings, so I've told you where the theme is. And where you can change that, you can change your language here. You can change pin settings, distance. You can change your distance there. Uh, let's try and like plan a route. So let's say I'm wanting to go to this town or maybe, yeah, let's just say this town. Directions. It's going to bring up the directions immediately, which is just like really handy. And when you're in driving mode, it's for cars, it's incredible. Google Maps is like the best in the world for that. And um, we can simply pin this one and I can view it later in my saved uh, pinned routes, for example. And it gives us the average time. We can play music if we want. There's various different apps you can pull in for podcasts and stuff like that. Um, we've got show traffic data. We can turn it from satellite mode right in here and turn it on and off. You can share a trip in progress, which I think is really cool. I love that feature. I can change it from cycling to uh, hiking. 
I don't recommend Google Maps for walking that distance. Um, I would recommend a different app for navigating that. Um, and then we've got driving, which is pretty standard. So we've got the driving options. So we've got tolls, we can avoid motorways, we can avoid tolls, we can avoid ferries, but we're not gonna do that if we're on land, obviously. In the top here, when we're navigating in the directions panel, we can swap the two locations around by pressing that button. Um, depending on literally where you're starting. You can also add points to here. So we top, tap these three buttons here and you can add a stop. And then it's kind of a clunky system. It's not, they prefer you to make this on the actual computer rather than using your phone. Let's say I wanna take the countryside route, then I can choose this random little town here that I'd like to go through. And now I've changed the whole route, as you can clearly see. And it's not even adding that much extra to where I'd like to go. Um, that's how you do that. And then you can change the order of all of that. That's how you add a stop. Let's go back into settings and we've got offline maps. Um, I want to show you how to do that because some people keep searching this and they don't know how to do it. So you simply tap on the settings panel in, your, in, in here and then you go to offline. And then we can choose a location. So I'm going to just like say here. This is as big as the map gets. You can't make the map any larger than that. So here as I zoom out, that's the maximum that you can get. So I could download like all of my region, which is handy. Um, and then you can see it's in like portrait mode for, for like smartphones. So that's handy. And it's only 500 megs that it'll take up on my phone. Uh, as I zoom in, the size will actually adjust. It'll go down to 160 megabytes and etc. So that's quite useful if you're going to go to an area where the service is going to be quite patchy on your phone. These maps do expire over time, which I guess that's to do with license agreements or something. I'm not sure why they do that. Also, the offline navigation, as far as I know, still doesn't work for bikes. So if you're cycling, forget it. The offline map only works for driving. What else do we have? We have down at the bottom here, we have a whole bar that's dedicated to updates on the area, which just shows you updates on various businesses. I don't use this feature. I think it's not useful to me personally. You can contribute to the actual map itself. This is the most useful thing. So you can review a place, you can add a photo, you can write review, you can uh, add a place. Like I said, you can edit the map, which is quite handy if there's a uh, road that hasn't been updated um, when you when you change something it takes sometimes months for things to be updated on Google Maps because they cross reference and they ask people and um, is this place having disabled ramps that you can go up and and like stuff like that it's it takes a long time for for the the map to be updated that's what I've noticed and open street maps which is another competitor or a different option to Google Maps is better when it comes to that. It updates the map quicker when you change something. You've got your profile, for example. So you can upload pictures to your Google Maps profile and it's added to the Google Street View data thing. And for example, I've posted a review on one of these mountain peaks. You can review shops, you can review all sorts of stuff. Um, and then people can follow you. It's I don't really use this very much, but it is very useful for reviewing places and giving your opinion. You've got your saved locations. I'll give you an example. Let's say I saved that pin from earlier. So we've got this pin and then you can literally just save it down in the bottom left there. You can change, you can have a new list. That's how you save your places on there. Um, so let's go back into the saved locations. I think this is really great. The only thing is that Google My Maps stores your custom maps here for some reason. So down in the bottom left, you've got maps and then you get your custom maps. So that's how I brought in my data from my world tours that I've done. And it's an amazing thing. This took actually like months of work to build this map. Uh, this was not just something that you, Google Maps makes just on the cuff. Um, I had to manually make and draw this actually, but uh, it does save all of your locations. So you just have to stitch it together. And this is how I was able to make this map. I've made tutorials on how I've actually done this in the past. It's really handy, really cool. It's one of the best in the world for like sharing your map to someone else, which is really cool. 
So that's how we bring in Google My Maps there from there. So we've got saved pins. We've got the Go feature, which saves your navigation, uh, your quick navigations that you wanted, which I showed you earlier. The Explore button is there down on the bottom left. I don't use this. About a month ago or several months ago, they had this feature where the, the Explore page was right here and it always loaded every single time you loaded Google Maps. It got really annoying. And personally, I don't like the way they're like trying to push you to like force to advertise the businesses in the area. It might be good for businesses, but I just want to like navigate on Google Maps. That's what everybody wants to do. They just want to tap on their location and press go. That's as simple as that. I don't want to get bombarded by advertising. Now, I do think Google Maps is actually pretty um, good when it comes to like not bombarding you with ads. But that, in my opinion, was a bit intrusive in the beginning. But they have updated this and it has gotten a little bit better. Um, it's useful if you're wanting to like find restaurants and like things like that. I don't use this feature. If I'm looking for restaurants, I might like zoom in on a city, like let's say this one, and I tap restaurants there. That's how I'm probably gonna find it. But as you wish, you can do as you wish. Let's go into the pros and cons a little bit. Um, like I said, the offline data for, for your maps are, does not work with cycling mode. I have no idea why, and I'd like that to be updated. The theme, I don't know why the theme is saved in your settings. So you have to go to account, settings, and then turn it on and off. It'd be nice just to have a button on the actual home screen where you just tap like night mode and day mode, and it would be as simple as that. During the day, it's better to have light mode because then you can actually see everything more clearly. Some of these things I'd like to turn off. I only use save locations and I like to bring in my own custom maps. That is, honest to God, that's the only reason I use Google Maps. It's just the best for that. You can explore your timeline, which I need to show you how to do that. So we go into the account settings here, explore your timeline, and I'm gonna to go to trips just to give you a full overview. This is a cool slash creepy feature, but it saves every location you've ever made since you've made an account with Google. And you can turn this on and off. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But it saves every, lo every location you've been to. So whether you like that or not, you'd be the judge of that. That's how I was able to create those custom maps because it saves all the data. Uh, I need to switch to my personal account because I don't share location on my business account. I've got a couple of friends and family members who use this feature and it's really handy if we're like, you know, exploring around the mountains and we want to know where each other are. Um, that feature is there and it's it's really amazing. I can see where friends are. You, you be the judge whether you like this or not. Um, I really like this feature. I think it's great and it's very handy. Like I said, you can share a trip in progress and you can share your location with people. So let's go to the saved button maps and then i brought in the map data from here i can bring up another map i have another custom map which is me walking across the mountains in the pyrenees i have full documentary on this in case you're interested and this is a custom map so i created these these are the regions of the pyrenees so i made this within google my maps which you need to use a desktop computer but then you can bring in all this data directly into Google Maps on your phone and it's pretty good. I wish you could navigate with the data that you draw out, but Google Maps right now doesn't let you do that. It's usually their navigation and you can only use that. So I, I kind of wish that was different, but it isn't for now. Another feature that I don't see very often on Google Maps is a way to view how much your route is going to cost you in fuel. Now, there are other apps you can use that allow you to see this. This is one called mappy.com. And it just simply brings up how much the trip is going to cost in terms of tolls. I can change that. So I can change this to, to another route that's um, some payage means like without paying. And then uh, more rapid, plus rapide, faster. And you can see the cost. So that's going to be 42 euros to take the take the toll road. This is another slight complaint I have that I wish that 
was addressed. When you when it ha when it comes to the performance of Google Maps and running it on a phone, the older your device is, the worse it's going to perform. And I kind of wish that that wasn't the case. I kind of wish that they had a light version for when you just want like quick, easy navigation. For example, if I'm, I'll show you the performance thing. I have a pretty powerful phone. This is a just a Samsung S10 Plus. It should be reasonably fast. And when I'm zooming around and I'm zooming around the map, it's, it's pretty quick. It's not lagging, which is great. But let's say I tap directions and I click start. You can start to see it's lagging a little bit. It's not so quick. And if you're, and I've just dragged up, it didn't do that. So it's kind of lagging a bit. It's not mega quick. It, it's okay on my device. Now imagine if you're using a de another device, which is older than mine, like an S, I don't know, a Samsung S5, for example, I'm not sure. Any, even some of the newer phones are not powerful enough to run Google Maps like on full, on full speed. And that's simply, I think, unfair. There should be a mode there should be two different versions of Google Maps. One where it's just a really simple version of Google Maps. It doesn't require a high spec device so that everybody can use Google Maps. And then there should be a pro mode, I don't know, or just like a standard Google Maps, which runs where you need to have the latest device and the latest firmware in order to get the full benefits of Google Maps. And that, that's kind of what I wish was, was changed. And I have noticed a big difference. Like, if you download the older version of Google Maps, like from like 2013, 2014, you will have way less features, but the, the app itself runs like butter on these old devices. I highly recommend doing that, just searching for the APK on Android, and you can just Google search that and you can get the older version of Google Maps and it will perform a lot better than the 2021 version of Google Maps. In conclusion, I think that if you're just looking for an app that's just going to bring up your directions immediately and just you can navigate, go for it. Like Google Maps is one of the best. You don't need to change. But if you are looking for an app where you get more customizability and you get to see more data on like hiking and cycling and things like this, I recommend another app. Like I said, Mappy. I have a full review on this app, and I and I recommend using this instead of using Google Maps. It uses OpenStreet data, OpenStreetMap data, and that's where people contribute to the maps. And Google Maps is is a contribute system, but it's still run and managed by Google Maps, so they still approve things. I mean, the Street View feature is like no other map mapping system comes close to what Google Maps offers, but and also like importing data from custom Google Maps, like Google My Maps. It's amazing. And I, I do, like I said, no other map comes close to doing like this, where I can just bring up the map like immediately like this. But when you want to import GPX files and KML files, if you don't know what that means, you probably won't be using Google Maps for something like this. And you probably won't be watching the video right now if I said that. But GPX file data and things like this. You cannot import from your Garmin. You can't do stuff like this. It's tricky to do this. This is KML and GPX file data, as you can see, but I cannot follow this. This uh, I cannot navigate with this, with this GPX data. I can only just look at it. And it doesn't give you turn-by-turn -turn navigation for GPX data. Maybe they change that in the future, who knows? I think that sometimes they put too much features into Google Maps and I think all navigation software should be just simple to use and tell you what's the best route, right? That's kind of the general case. When it comes to Google Maps, it is one of the best in the world and I do recommend it. Um, but like I said, there are some pros and cons and I recommend other apps for when Google Maps is falling short on these features that you need, I recommend another application. So have a look at those reviews. I hope you found this video useful. And that's pretty much it for this review. Have a look at like the 2022 version when that comes out. And I'll be definitely reviewing that. And that's pretty much it.